Welcome everyone again. This is the seventh annual telethon for stroke and aphasia awareness, Renee Marie Foundation. And uh, we're welcoming again, Dr. Libman. Uh, I wanna mention, please, if you are watching, don't forget to hit that little donate button and every penny helps. So, you know, we're really looking to raise as much money as we can this year. Last year was a little bit thin because of all of the, uh, the, the health issues. But we want to reintroduce Dr. Richard Libman, who is the Chief of Vascular Neurology at Northwell Health and Professor of Neurology at Zucker School Northwell, uh, at Hofstra Northwell. I think I just mixed that up a little bit. But uh, Dr. Mm -hmm. Libman is now going to tell us about a new version of the TPA drug, the clot buster that's been used for many, many years uh, to treat stroke within a, a certain time frame of four, four and a half hours. And this is something that's been around for a bit, but is now uh, coming along. So take it away, Dr. Lidman. Thank you very much, Ginny, and hello, everyone. And I'll just emphasize something and change what Ginny said a little bit. Even if you're not watching, hit the donate button anyway. And even if you're not listening, hit the donate button. That would be awfully nice. But just kidding, we still want you to watch and listen. Um, so um, we're going to um, talk now a little bit about something that's kind of on the horizon and maybe immediately even a little bit af after or before the horizon. I'm not sure what the correct expression is because it's kind of new. Um, it's, it's being adopted to some degree in... Um, several hospitals across the United States and several hospital systems. And it's been adopted wholesale in some may, uh, large countries such as India and even Australia. So I'm going to tell you about it because uh, it's not something way off the beaten path. And what we're talking about is a potential replacement for TPA. TPA, as you know, is the clot busting drug, and we've talked about it in the past and in the other segment, um, that TPA is the standard clot busting drug used to treat stroke very early. We know within a four and a half hour window, it helps people get better from their strokes. And TPA has been more or less the standard of care for early stroke treatment for the last 25 years. Now, the question is, you know, can we do better than TPA in terms of an injectable drug? That means a drug basically going into the IV, uh, not talking about other techniques where you go in with catheters right up into the brain, pull out blood clots. That's a whole different story. And I think we'll talk about that a little bit more in another segment. But the question is, can we do a little bit better than TPA? Uh, still within the four and a half hour window. So nothing else changing. But is there something that has certain advantages that could potentially be used instead of TPA to do the same job at least as well, maybe a little better, uh, and at least as safely, or maybe even more safe. And here's the answer, which I think you can tell by the way I'm building it up. There's a medication, has a long name, doesn't have the sort of abbreviated name of TPA, called tenecteplase. It does have an abbreviated name, sometimes called TNK, as opposed to TPA, TNK, which is an abbreviation for tenecteplase. And what is tenecteplase? Basically, it is the closest relative to TPA as you could possibly get. Think about not even a first cousin or a second cousin, not a parent, kind of a sibling, and maybe even a twin, and almost an identical twin, except with one little tweak here or there. So if you could think of an identical twin, looks virtually identical, but one eyebrow looks a little different, or maybe the thumb is a little longer on one side than the other. It's almost identical as an identical twin. But what it is, is actually it's a it's what's called a mutant, actually. It's a slight mutation, and you've all heard of mutations. Now we all know mutants, like the Delta, the Delta variant is a mutant when it comes to COVID. It's a slight change in the virus, only a slight change makes a big difference. And here's TPA with a slight variation or a slight mutation, and it's now called tenecteplase. 
And basically it does the same job as TPA and there have been multiple, multiple studies and it does the same job. So why would we want to replace good old TPA with another drug if it's so similar? It's almost a clone. It's almost a clone, almost an identical twin of TPA. But these tiny, tiny changes in the composition of tenecteplase, almost identical to TPA with a few little snippets here and there that are a little different. What difference does that make? Let me tell you, they may seem like minor differences, but they may translate into more important differences. Here's an example. When we give TPA, it only lasts in the body, actually, for a few minutes. So when we give TPA, you have to first give it by an injection. That gives the original sort of push of TPA into your system, and that's just a small amount of the total amount we want to give, but it gets something in quickly. But it doesn't last long. In a few minutes, that amount of TPA is going to be gone. It just gets basically broken down and excreted. It goes out of the body. So that's why after you give TPA by an injection, by just a push, you then have to hang an IV and it goes in over another hour. And you have to give it for another hour. That's complicated, believe it or not. It goes in through a special pump and you have to make sure you've calculated it correctly and it's going in at exactly the right rate, not too quickly, not too slowly. Has to go in over an hour with an electronic pump with either a battery or a plug-in. And remember, a lot of patients that we treat with TPA, they may be in one hospital and then we have to transfer them quickly to another hospital for further treatment. They may be getting their TPA and they may be eligible for what we'll talk about in another segment, for this even more aggressive treatment where we're putting catheters right up into people's brains and pulling out blood clots and restoring the blood flow. Well, that's done in very few hospitals. North Shore in Manhasset is one such hospital. It's not done at many other hospitals, even across the country, only selected hospitals. The point is we've got to transfer these patients quickly. And every time we start TPA on them and you get this drip going and it has to be set correctly and monitored carefully, You've got this extra pump, this IV pump out here. It's got to be plugged in or it's got to make sure you got to make sure the battery's charged because you don't want that pump running out of electricity in the middle of transport to another hospital. It gets a little complicated and it adds to time and it adds to labor. Guess what? Take this new drug, Tenecteplase. It does the same job as TPA. It's a clot buster but it lasts much longer in the body to the degree that you can just give it as an injection, as I was describing before, you just kind of push it in over about five seconds, that's it. No IV, no pumps, no drips over the subsequent hour, the, you're done. The medication is in the patient, it stays there for a much longer period of time, it's doing its job. So that makes it much easier to get that patient in an ambulance super fast, transport them when appropriate to another facility. North Shore is just one example where we are doing this very aggressive treatment, pulling clots out of people's major blood vessels inside the brain. That's number one. It simplifies the whole drug delivery and transport process don't have to worry about monitoring the pump. God forbid the drug TPA going in a little too quickly or a little too slowly. It's not doing the right job or it's going in too quickly. Um, you don't have to worry about any of that. Connect the place, five seconds, inject it. It's in, it's doing its job and it's beginning to break down the blood clot. That's number one. Number two, it's been tested and researched versus TPA, taking the same type of stroke patients, Half the patients get regular TPA. Half the patients now get tenecteplase, the new clot buster. Every study that's been done has, been, has shown that it's either as effective and in some cases even more effective at breaking down blood clots and restoring blood flow. So what we know from the studies is that 
it's at least as effective and in certain cases may be more effective. So far, no downside. What's the main worry of any clot busting drug? The main concern, the main side effect, because it's a clot buster, it's breaking down blood clots, is bleeding. And we've known that the very early days when we were testing TPA at LIJ and making sure it was effective and making sure it was safe, of course, there is a risk of bleeding. You can't get around it. What all the studies have shown is that the benefits of a drug like TPA far outweigh the risks. We always discuss the benefits and we discuss the risks. No drug is perfect. But if you get TPA, for example, you're much more likely to do well than if you don't get TPA, despite the risk of bleeding. So that's why we know it works and it's approved and we want to use it as often as we can. So what about the risks of bleeding with tenecteplase as compared with TPA? Well, it's about the same. Everybody hoped it would be less. We can't claim that it's safer, but it's certainly not more dangerous. As I mentioned, it is at least as effective and in some cases more effective. It's much easier to give. Boom, one shot, no long drips. And by the way, something I didn't mention, in these days of COVID, which we hope will vanish from the earth someday, but apparently not tomorrow. In these days of COVID, when you think about the safety of healthcare workers and nurses in particular, who have to be with that patient so frequently, and once you put an IV in and it's going through the drip, through the pump, that requires constant attention, constant adjustments, and that nurse has got to be in and out and in and out and in and out repeatedly for that patient. That is no longer necessary with tenecteplase because it's only one shot. There's nothing to monitor after that in terms of a, an electronic pop and the rate that it's going in, all that kind of thing. So just in terms of safety for healthcare workers, I know that's a whole different kettle of fish and that's a whole different issue, but it is an issue. And our colleagues who are nurses um, you know, have been putting their lives on the line since COVID started. And uh, I can't tell you how many nurses I know who have gotten sick, um, mostly prior to the vaccine or, you know, unvaccinated or prior to the vaccine. People were really getting sick. And um, some of these nurses were hospitalized, and I know at least two who died. And uh, so allowing nurses to have a little less contact. I, I'm not saying they're not having contact with the patient. They're still having lots of contact with the patient. They're taking care of the patient. But just because of the IV, they don't have to rush in repeatedly just to check the IV. They're doing all the other things they have to do to take care of the patient and monitor the patient. But with tenecteplase, it's that much less. So that ensures a little more safety for healthcare workers, such as nurses. And uh, one more thing that many people don't think about um, but is probably important in today's healthcare environment, and you know about skyrocketing healthcare costs and how many dollars we spend on healthcare in this country and compared to other countries, you know, it's difficult to see where all those dollars are going because as many of you know, our outcomes are not always so great, even though we're spending huge amounts of money on healthcare in this country. Um, Tenecteplase just happens to be quite a bit less expensive than TPA. So does about the same job, sometimes is even more effective, is equally safe, is much easier to administer, and it actually is, it's almost half the price, half. Um, so that you're saving X number of thousands of dollars um, with every patient that we treat. So that is kind of the background to this new drug, which I forgot to say is not really new. Uh, 30 years ago and more, it was being used to open up blocked vessels in the heart, blocked arteries in the heart for um, heart attacks. And it was found to be quite effective. The only reason it's not used for heart attacks anymore is that cardiologists are now rushing in and putting stents in and that sort of thing. They're doing things mechanically, which are opening up blood vessels that much faster. That's the only reason tenecteplase was actually used and very effective for heart blockages as well. So it's not a new medication. It's not really experimental at all. 
It's just that we're finding that this almost identical twin of TPA seems to be a very promising alternative to TPA, to nectoplase compared to TPA. And we are now in the process of starting to revise our protocol for example, in the Northwell system, you know, it's a big system, about 23 hospitals. Um, everything moves slowly, and sometimes it's like being on an aircraft carrier. We want to make a turn, but that turn definitely is slower, more slow than turning your, your Tesla, if you're lucky enough to have one. Even my Subaru makes faster turns than an aircraft carrier. But we're trying to make that turn. Again, it does involve education of staff, of doctors, of nurses, of neurologists, of emergency departments. Everybody has to learn. We have to rewrite things. Even though it's a very similar drug, it's still a different drug. And we have to make sure we do it right. So we're on the verge, probably in the next few months, of converting from TPA to tenecteplase. Um, we see very little downside. And there are some upsides. As you can hear from what I described, there are some very prominent and very famous stroke centers across the country now that have already adopted uh, to next place to replace TPA. And as I mentioned, there are some entire countries. Remember India, that small little country with a small population? Well, they have um, completely replaced TPA nationally with connect the place, as has Australia. And uh, I think we're going in that direction. Um, so it is exciting. I can't say that it's a revolutionary change because, again, it's sort of a first, not even a first cousin. It's an identi almost identical twin or clone of TPA, but it gives us a little bit of extra push, um, a, a foot up, you might say, a, a, a step up um, to a slightly more effective uh, medication that we're going to be using day in and day out. Um, yes, Dr. Libman, thank you so much. I, I had two questions, and you actually already answered one of them uh, about the cost factor, which is very good news. The other question, quickly, is is the same uh, time element uh, involved with the new drug, the same limit of four, four and a half hours? The answer is absolutely yes. As far as we can tell, so far, it should be used exactly the same way we use TPA, four and a half hour window, all the directions and instructions and pleas we make to the public are exactly the same. Get to the hospital as quickly as possible. As soon as you recognize any signs or symptoms of stroke, sudden paralysis, sudden weakness on one side, sudden numbness, sudden inability to speak or slurring your words, sudden imbalance or trouble walking, all these things are possible. Symptoms of stroke, get to the hospital. We have it until four and a half hours, just as we do for TPA. That doesn't mean you wait four and a half hours. The earlier we treat, the better. And for those of you who have seen the other segment that we talked about, where we talk about wake up stroke, where we're able to sometimes treat you, even if you wake up with your stroke and we don't know exactly what occurred. We talked about using an MRI to be able to identify when the stroke occurred within the last four and a half hours then we can treat. It's exactly the same for the new drug to neck the place as it is for good old TPA. We do all the same things and um, we can treat you, but you must get to the hospital quickly. Uh, yes, and that I think brings us back to our acronym of BFAST, balance, eyes, face, uh, speech, and time. Balance, eyes, speech. And uh, arm, the A, uh, arm, oh, I'm sorry. arm weakness. <laughs> arm weakness. Just get, you don't have to do anything fancy. Just tell your, whoever you're with, just, you know, whoever's watching, just say, hey, lift up your arms. And, yeah. uh, you know, you see one of them drift down or one doesn't move as well. Yeah. Boom. Sign of weakness. Well, thank you, Dr. Libman, again. Very good. Our, uh, an additional segment. And we will have another segment again. Uh, please donate uh, and, as we go along. And uh, thank you, Dr. Libman. And I hope people will come back in to see the next segment. Thank you again. Thank you very much. My pleasure.